when it comes to how much of a dose and how often one should uh, do a ceremony or how mm -hmm. often someone should be allowed into ceremony, I know you have some thoughts and guidelines. I have a list there. You want to go ahead and share what you think is important with regard to, to dosage and frequency of ceremony? Yeah, the dose is simple. Uh, you want to have a dose that gets you into fully into the experience. And once you're fully into the experience, it's no longer about the dose. And so when you're using a purgative medicine, you're going to typically purge some of it out anyway. And so more is not more. It's about having something that gets you fully into the experience. Uh, I personally hear the doses that are going through the communities now, and they sound like very large doses to me, and people shrug them off like they're not that large of a dose. And so I think start smaller and work your yeah. way up. And when it's when it gets strong enough that you know you're fully in and you're you're having a transcendental experience, you're having a visionary experience, you're in an altered state for three, four, five hours, that is a big enough dose to be transformative. And so I think you work your way up to the dose. Um, if you're in a ceremony and you feel like someone's going to give you a dose because they're the facilitator and you don't feel like it's appropriate for you, it's always appropriate for you to say no. I don't care if they have a tradition where you can't do that. If I got served too, what I thought was too large of a dose of ayahuasca for any reason, even if I didn't know and I just felt that way, I wouldn't drink all of it. Don't consume anything that you don't feel 100% confident in consuming. Uh, the other thing to realize is that the potency is not easy to see from the outside. So sometimes very small amounts of things are very, very potent. So there can be plant medicines it, you know, by weight where you need a much smaller amount than what you do with somebody else's plant medicine that's half the strength or a quarter of the strength. So, you know, ask what's the, the typical strength of the medicines and see how the person responds to, to that idea of the relative strength of, of what they serve. And the last part is if you find yourself having had a large dose and it is a big experience. Always remember that that's what you signed up for when you consumed it. We believe that if you ingested it, you take responsibility for the fact that you ingested it. So you have to get you know really strong and the courage and everything to have that experience and ultimately have it be a positive one. And the facilitators are there to help support you and guide you so that you can do that. In terms of frequency, you have to really watch within yourself. The traditional medicines have a frequency of use. Um, and so typically with, for instance, ayahuasca, it's three or four ceremonies is considered a treatment. After that, you must integrate. That integration could take anywhere from uh, a month to six months and during maybe even a year, a year and a half. So during that period of time, you're actually working with the resonant effects of the, the ceremonies that you did. And so I think when you think about whether it's the right time, you need to think, okay, I had an experience. Have I integrated that experience? And now have I, through integrating that experience, am I ready for the next experience? And if the answer is yes, then it would be appropriate for you to consider doing plant medicine uh, ceremonies again. In my practice, they're more frequent than in a lot of practices. But I don't think that that's safe and responsible for everybody. And so um, taking that into consideration, you know, really depending on the medicine, you want to have a nice amount of time between sessions that you do. So it, sometimes you're going to do two, three, four in a row, like within a week or eight days or something like that. And then you need months before you go and do it again. Give yourself that period of time. Having that gap is really important. And if you have a um, longer series of ceremonies, like four to eight ceremonies in a short period of time, you need that integration time to be even longer. Yes. One of the things that I want to highlight here that's very important, and I'm going to start by telling a true story about Paul Cech. <laughs> when I was, I think, 15, there was a rock concert in the town I grew up in. I grew up in a small town on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And a bunch of my buddies were heavy into drinking. And at that time, you know, keeping up with your buddies is important when you're a teenager. And so uh, we were each tasked with showing up with a bottle of hard alcohol 
which then became a drinking contest. And I wasn't much of a drinker as a kid. I never really was attracted to alcohol. But in this instance, I wanted to be part of the gang. So I showed up and I had, you know, a bottle of, uh, I think I had Southern Comfort and one guy had Drambuie and another guy had Bailey's. And we proceeded to drink all that alcohol and about the last thing I remember was walking into the rock concert with them. And the next thing I remember was waking up in jail, in a jail cell, surrounded by drunks laying in vomit. And I was shocked that, one, I'd never been in jail before, so that was an interesting one. Two, I was really shocked about what was going to happen when my parents found out. But the point I'm making is, is I drank so much alcohol, I went unconscious and I didn't even know what happened. And I had to go ask my friends, how did I end up in jail? And they proceeded to tell me that when the band went on break, I decided that I would go up on stage and continue the concert. So I went up and started playing the guitar, one of the guitars, and then got on the drum set. And then the cops came and got me and threw me in jail um, because they figured out quite quickly I was extremely drunk. Why is that a relevant story? Because if you take too big of a dose <clears throat> and it pushes you into a state of unconsciousness you cannot learn anything in the ceremony you cannot defend yourself against anything in the ceremony you're a play toy for sexual abusers you're a play toy for entities you're a play toy for anybody but the worst thing is you've just wasted medicine so the key thing about dose is if you're not sure, remember the words, less is more. You can always come back and, and do more next time, but you'll have the confidence of knowing how much you can handle, what the experience was like, and that gives you sort of a sense of measure of, you know, one gram, two grams, three grams. But if you go from two grams of mushrooms to six, you're probably going to end up metaphorically in a jail cell surrounded by drunks because you didn't realize how powerful that was. And like Hamilton said, the quality of something like a mushroom, even though they've got the same name, the, the, the power difference is radical. I mean, I've had freshly grown mushrooms and might have taken six grams and it felt like I was on three grams. And then I've got other mushrooms specifically grown by shaman that are very, very potent. And, and three grams of them must be powerful as six grams of other mushrooms. So you, you got to be careful. My warning is if you go unconscious, you're no longer in a medicinal ceremony. You are now basically unconscious and you're leaving yourself very open to a lot of X factors that could be very, very dangerous. And you won't have learned anything. And you might develop a habit that only fortifies your habit of copping out of your responsibility to yourself your relationships and your life.